guys welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be continuing on with our mac os development with app kit tutorial series and in this particular tutorial we are going to be taking a look at how we can create a collection view in app kit now there are a few things that we need to understand before we can actually begin writing code to uh, provide uh, the implementation of our collection view. So first, what is a collection view? Well, an NS collection view, the type of object we're going to be using today, uh, is a type of view that allows you to create a flexible grid of items, a fixed grid of items uh, that you know, that supports a dynamic number of items. And then there's a, uh, then they also support various other kinds of layouts that you can specify or through the built-in compositional layout for a collection view. Um, the next concept that we need to understand is NS collection view layout. Now, what is an NS Collection View Layout? Well, NS Collection View Layout is the base class for any layout for a collection view. Uh, now, you generally do not create objects for NS Collection View Layout on its own. You need to create objects of classes that in that inherit from co uh, collection view layout. Now those those different kinds of layouts I described when talking about collection view, let's kind of go over those. Uh, the first one being NS collection view flow layout. Now this kind of creates a flexible grid um, for your collection view, right? So if you make your window bigger or you make it smaller the amount of items in the row or column depending on the layout's scroll direction uh, changes and those changes get get animated so you can see uh, the collection view make those changes uh, on the fly now the ns collection view grid layout what this layout does is it allows you to be a little bit more specific on how many, for example, columns or rows you want in your collection view. So if you want your collection view to only have two rows in a horizontally scrolling collection view, you can do that. If you want your uh, collection view to have only five columns that take up uh, a certain amount of space in the in the view, you can do that too. Um, so with that, we then also have compositional layouts. Now, NS Collection View compositional layout or composition layout, um, what they do is it allows you to be a little bit more expressive in what kind of layout you specify for a collection view. Uh, this could be, for example, maybe you want a view in your app that displays pictures as if it was a pile of pictures on a desktop or something, like a physical desktop. Then you could do that. Uh, you could do that with a compositional layout. Uh, if you want to display, for example, uh, document thumbnails in maybe a circular layout for whatever reason, you could do that. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with a compositional layout, and it's a more modern approach to laying out a collection view, but it is something that you can do. All right. So those are a few of the concepts that we need to understand when we uh, create a collection view and in order to make the right choice for what you want your user interface to actually look like. Now the next and final concepts that we're going to 
discuss before we actually get into writing some code is NS collection view delegate and NS collection view data source. Now the delegate uh, is the NS collection view delegate is a protocol that contains methods um, for performing specific uh, bits and bobs of a collection view. This could this can be um, specifying like dynamic sizing for elements in your layout, um, uh, supporting selection of one or more items and performing actions when something's selected, that kind of stuff uh, is where you, that, that kind of stuff is done in the delegate. So uh, any object that, that uh, conforms to that delegate protocol, uh, you can put you know, you can put all that kind of code in there. Now the data source is where the collection view gets the number of items it needs to display and it gets the actual item that it needs to display based on a unique identifier uh, that gets reused uh, and recycled. And we'll talk more about how that exactly works. Uh, in a little bit, but the data source also allows you to specify uh, how many sections there are in a collection view because a collection view supports sections, whereas a table view doesn't. Um, the collection view does. If you are familiar with uh, UIKit in iOS, a collection view and table view support sections on that platform uh, as well. All right, so. With that explained, let's go ahead and get into some code. So inside of Xcode, I have a view controller here. And there are some errors in this view controller because we haven't created our collection view yet. Um, I already have the collection view added as a sub view to the view in our window. And then I have its constraints um, plotted already. Uh, in the configure constraints method in this controller. Uh, I also have two constants up at the top for my array of NS colors inside of my constants file. And then I have an array of strings for shapes. These are SF symbols representing various shapes. Um, from my constants file as well. So we're gonna be using both of these and uh, we'll, we'll take a look a little bit more at what these are gonna be, uh, you know, what the colors are gonna be used for, what the shapes are gonna be used for and all of that. All right, so beneath our constants that we have here and above uh, view did load. What we're going to do is we're going to say var cv for collection view equals ns collection view. Make sure it's an empty initializer because we could provide it a frame and that would work fine, but we don't have to. So I'm going to leave it empty because I want to use programmatic constraints rather than a frame. All right, then, then we need to specify the layout. Now this layout, in this particular example, we're going to use the NS collection view flow layout. So we'll say var layout equals NS collection view flow layout. This is also going to be an empty initializer. And for good measure, I'm also going to create another variable. This variable is going to be called size, and it's going to be of type ns size. Now, this variable is going to be used to specify the size of our collection view items. So we'll say var. Uh, I'll just do that. Var size 
equals ns size with a width of let's say 120 and a height of 120 and then we'll have two other variables these variables are going to be for the spacing between items vertically and horizontally so we'll say var well, we'll have the spacing be equal both vertically and horizontally. So, we'll, so we just need one var spacing. And this is going to be a CG float. So CG float equals, let's say, 10. Now, the reason why we have to explicitly specify CG float is because if I just said 10, it would interpret it as an integer uh, using the type inference. Uh, if I said 10.0, it would interpret it as a double uh, with its type inference. So I have to explicitly tell it, hey, this is gonna be a CG float. All right, so we can save this. And we can uh, we can continue on. I need to first remove something from my from the definition here. Okay, there we go. I had to remove a protocol conformance because we're not quite there yet, and I was experimenting to make sure that everything worked earlier. All right. So now that we have all of the variables that we're going to need for now, let's go into our configure method. And in here, we'll say layout dot item size equals size layout dot uh, minimum line spacing is equal to spacing. So this is the vertical spacing. And then layout dot minimum inter item spacing. This is the horizontal spacing equals spacing like that. All right. So now that we have those properties set, we also need to set the scroll direction of our layout. So layout dot scroll direction equals, we're gonna have it be a vertical layout here, like that. Perfect. And so, now that we have our layout configured, let's configure our collection view. We'll say cv dot data source equals self and we will uh, we'll make this work in a second because we're going to get an error saying, oh, view controller can't uh, can't be used for the data source because it's not because it doesn't conform to that uh, protocol, all that. But we'll we'll do some we'll do something about that here in a second. Next, we need to set the collection views layout. So we'll say cv dot collection view layout equals layout, like that, cv dot, uh, we want now is selectable We'll say is selectable equals false because we don't want we don't want the user to be able to select items in our collection view for now. And then we can say cv dot 
translates auto resizing mask into constraints equals false to enable our programmatic constraints. And then there is one last thing that we need to do with our collection view, and that is register a cell, or not, not a cell, but an item for our collection view that we can use inside of it. And so we'll create a custom item in this video, but you can use a just a normal NS collection view item in the, uh, for this if you want. Uh, we'll cover a little bit more about NS collection view item as we go forward, but for now, what I want you to do is we'll do cv.register false, okay, cv.register, and here we'll say shape item dot self now we don't have a shape item class yet uh, and we'll create that in a moment next we need to give it a reuse identifier which is of type ns user interface item identifier just like the identifiers for a column and a cell in an ns table ns table view so we'll say n actually we can just say uh, shape item dot identifier because we'll create a static property in that class for the identifier. All right, so now that we have our user interface configured for the collection view and all of that, we now need to create the actual collection view item uh, for our collection view. And then when we create our item, we're gonna come back and conform to the data source so we can then implement the, the methods that we need to implement to make our collection view actually work. So, excuse me, we'll go into the project navigator. Go to our target here, our targets group rather. We'll say new empty file, and this file is gonna be called shape item. We'll say import Coco. And then we'll say class shape item. And we want this class to inherit from NS collection view item. Now, when we create this custom item, one thing to keep in mind is that NS collection view item is itself a subclass of NS view controller. So all of our collection view items are technically view controllers. Whereas in UI kit, our collection view items, our collection view cells would be uh, UI views. These are full on view controllers. All right, so first things first, create, we need to create our static constant for the identifier. So we'll say static, uh, static let identifier equals NS user interface item identifier with a raw value of shape underscore item like that perfect next we are going to create an initializer this initializer is going to contain uh, one property and this property 
is going to be the name of the of the shape that we want to use. So we can say uh, first private var image view. Well, actually, what we should do instead, I guess, is instead of this being an initial an, an initializer. Uh, so we can just leave out the initializer. We can just create those uh, private variables for our, um, we can create private variables for our user interface components of our item. So private var shape equals ns image view. private var title label equals ns text field like that then we can override func view did load super view did load and then we'll have configure like that. We'll configure the user interface with private func configure. And then we will have a func called set and this will take in the name of our shape and the color that we want our shape to be. Like that. And so in here, we need to configure some stuff for our title label and for our uh, shape image view. So we'll say shape dot uh, it should be dot image scaling is equal to scale axes independently and then then we want shape dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints equals false like that. And then we'll say view add sub view shape. that because there's really not much that we want to do in configure other than configuring like the aspect ratio and enabling programmatic constraints inside of configure we're, we're going to configure the color and all of that sort of stuff um, in in the set method we'll say title label dot draws background equals false Title label dot is bezeled equals false. Title label dot is bordered equals false. Title label dot is editable equals false. And title label dot is selectable equals false. So we're just covering all of our bases here. And then we can say title label dot translates auto resizing mask into constraints equals false. 
and view dot add sub view title label like that. Perfect. Inside of our set method, then uh, what we're going to do when after we set up our constraints is we're going to set up the string value of our title label, and then we're going to set the color of the text for our title label as well. All right, let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and create our constraints. Activate. So NS layout constraint dot activate inside of here. We need to keep in mind that our item is going to have a 120 by 120 uh, point uh, size. So any constraints that we make has to be able to fit within that area. So we'll say shape dot top anchor dot constraint is equal to view top anchor so it'll be flush with the top of our collection view item then we are going to set the width and height of our image to 100 so 100 by 100 for the image we'll say shape dot width anchor dot constraints is equal to constant 100 and shape dot height anchor dot constraint is equal to constant 100 like that and then we're going to say shape dot center x anchor dot constraint equal to view center x anchor. So now we have a width, a height, an x, and a y position for our image view, exactly what auto layout needs. Next, we need to set the constraints for our title label. So for the title label, this is pretty much going to be pinned to the bottom of our, pinned to the bottom and leading and trailing anchors of our item with just a, just a little bit of padding, not much, just a little bit. So we'll say title label dot bottom anchor bottom anchor dot constraint is equal to view bottom anchor with a constant of minus five All right, then we're going to say title label dot leading anchor dot constraint is going to be equal to view leading anchor with a constant of five. And then a title label dot trailing anchor dot constraint is equal to view dot trailing anchor with a constant of negative five. So like I said, just a little bit of padding, not a whole lot, just a little bit. And that is the layout for our collection view item. We have an image and we have a title label. This is 
this is a very common UI pattern for collection views, especially in, uh, for example, say you have a, say you have an application where you're managing uh, book bucket lists or, uh, or or some kind of ebook library app. You're a lot of the time going to want to have an image that represents the cover and say a title for the book and maybe a rating right or or an author or or all of the above uh in your collection view cell so something like this is extremely useful all right so now that we have our collection view item let's quickly uh go over how we can actually make our collection view work with a data source so the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually conform to that protocol of NS collection view data source. So after our uh, NS view controller inheritance in our class declaration, we need a comma and then NS collection view data source now this can be an external object if you if you need it to be and in fact in most cases I would recommend that but this is just you know a, a this is for educational purposes so it's fine that we do that we're doing it this way all right so now that we have our data source uh, con uh, conformance what we can do is we can right click on our class definition and go under refactor and then we want add missing uh, protocol requirements and one of the more annoying things that Xcode will do here is it will put your uh, method stubs at the top of your class instead of at the bottom. So I'm just going to cut these. And we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here. And we'll paste these in here. And then for number of items in section, we're going to return an integer for how many items we want in our collection view. So we'll say return shapes dot count. Now we have collection view uh, item for represented object at index path. And this is the method that we're going to use to create and return all of our items for our collection view. Because as you can see, this method will return a not optional NS collection view item. Now, if you recall from our table view videos, uh, when we created our cells for our table view, uh, that was an optional NS view that it returned, right? So this is going to be slightly different in, in the fact that uh, you have to return something. You cannot return optional uh, stuff. You can't return nil. Something has to be returned. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create the item and make and you know and get the object for that now because we created a custom cell or custom item type we need to use a guard statement to cast ns collection view item to a um, to a shape item 
Now, why is this? Well, the method that we're going to use from our collection view to create this item is make item. And this method will effectively um, return, it'll, it'll return an NS collection view item, but our shape item is what we need. So we need to, and because it is an NS collection view item subclass, we can just cast it like, uh, like any other time that we've needed to cast something. But this cast could fail. So we need to put this inside of a guard statement and then return something else if, if it can't be casted. So inside of this method, the first thing we'll do is we'll say guard let item equals collection view dot make item with identifier shape item dot identifier for index path as question mark shape item else we will return a we'll create well we'll return just a blank ns collection view item so ns collection view item like that after that, if we reach this point, we know that we have an item because it was successfully created and successfully cast. Uh, but first, let's kind of talk about what make item is really doing here. So in a collection view for, for performance reasons, you are going to want to create and reuse and recycle items that are, uh, you know, items in your collection view. So you're not having to create new objects every time, not having to create more space and memory and all of that. Now, when we created our cells for a table view, it worked much the same way, except uh, make view on the table on the NS table view doesn't create the an object, doesn't create an NS view for you if if a view with the given identifier does not already exist, you have to manually create it and then make item will reuse it uh, later on. Make item combines both of those steps in one method call so you don't have to create the item manually. Now with this item, we'll say item dot set. And we can give it a name and a color, and we'll and we will populate this method here uh, in a moment. But we need to say shapes uh, at index path dot item. So the index of the item that we're uh, working with. All right, so now we have that as our little string there. As for the color, we have something slightly different that we can that we're going to do here. We're going to create a, we're going to generate a random color from our colors array uh, by doing the following colors int dot random zero dot dot less than colors dot count and there we go now we have a random color that is going to be assigned to our image view and the title label of our item last thing we need to do is return item all right, now let's go back into our item and give this set method an actual body to work with. So first things first, we need to actually assign the symbol to the image property of image view. 
So shape dot image equals. Now this is going to be an optional NS image equals NS image with a system symbol name of name the accessibility description will say is also going to be name like that so we now have the image in our image view we'll say shape dot content tint color equals color and then we're going to say title label dot string value is name and then title label dot text color is color like that all right now we can go ahead and run our code we get a successful build and now we have all of our shapes being put into a nice grid here uh, in our window All right, and you can see the shapes are all different random colors. The text labels for those shapes uh, inside of our items are also the same color. Uh, if we go outside of our collection view here and we tell our window to, for example, fill, because our window expanded, there's more space. And so uh, our collection view animates changes to the layout to make sure that uh, the items move around accordingly to, fix, uh, to fill that space. All right, so that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Thank you all so very much for watching, and we will see you all in the next video.